Ah, well, greetings, fellow Hoovians. Well, looks like I'm finally back to <clears throat> doing Wednesday reviews, not like last week, but eh, what you gonna do? So now, let's continue our look at the Second Doctor era with the Dominators. An alien craft bearing the ruthless Dominators arrives on the peaceful planet of Dolcus. The craft lands on the Island of Death, a nuclear testing site housing an anti-war museum that soon absorbs all the radiation on the island. The robotic quarks are sent out by the Dominators to repair boreholes into the planet's crust in order to convert the planet into rocket fuel. Toba uses the quarks to fire on and three, kill three adventure seekers who stumble across his project. Their pilot, Kali, however, survives by hiding himself away through the craft that brought him to the island is though the island though the craft that brought him to the island is destroyed. Rago is furious that these potential slaves have just been wasted. The TARS arrives on another part of the island, and the second doctor and his companions, Jamie and Zoe, begin to look around when they hear the explosion of the craft being destroyed. They take shelter in the museum building and meet three other newly arrived Dulcians, Dul Educator Balan and his young charges, Teal and Kando. All are puzzled that the radiation readings on the island read that the, that the radiation reading on the island reads nil, no, since it should be radioactive after the nuclear explosion when they're seventy two years earlier. Kali arrives too, and tells them about the murderous dominators and their robots. Balan does not accept this. He knows the son of the directors of the ruling council is well known as a con artist. Dun dun dun. The Porks have meanwhile begun work on drilling the outer boreholes. The Doctor and Jimmy are captured by a patrol of Quarks and taken to the Dominator's ship for questioning and scanning. The scan of Jimmy is presumed to apply to them both and to the Dulcian race as a whole, who are thus described as possible but not definite for conversion into a slave force. During intelligence tests, the Do Doctor gains stupidity to prove their worthlessness. He also fails to use a weapon from the Dulcian Museum, falsely claiming such military technology has been lost to the Dulcians. The Doctor and Jimmy are freed as worthless idiots. Kali has contacted his father, Director Sinex, who orders him to recharge Balin's travel capsule and use it to return to the capital city. He takes Zoe with him to the council chamber, but the discussion lacks focus and purpose. Sinex refuses to believe that Kali is telling the truth, despite Zoe's protests. So Kali steals a travel pod and heads back to the island with Zoe to give proof of their story. At the same time, the Doctor and Jamie take Balin's pod to the capital city. They are angry that Kali and Zoe have have been allowed to return to danger and have real trouble convincing the council of the dominator's threat. The true gene the yeah, sorry. The true danger is only revealed when the council obtains a visual image of a survey station destroyed by the quarks on Toba's instructions. The dominators capture Balan, Teal, and Kando, using them for further tests on their species before they are made to work as slaves in the drilling sites. Zoe and Coley are also captured too and made slaves, but Balan and Kando but find Balan and Kando opposed to using force against the quarks. However, they struggle to dig the borehole, with Balin collapsing. Kali manages to sneak away back to the museum and capture a laser weapon stored there as an exhibit. The Doctor and Jamie take control of a travel pod and return to the Island of Death. Jamie links up with Kali at the museum while the Doctor is captured by Quarks and taken with the slave force back to the Dominator's ship. Kali uses the gun to destroy a Quark, prompting another of Toba's rages. The museum is destroyed in, in retaliation, which infuriates Rago. He orders the quarks to hold the Doctor and Zoe for the test, while Balan, Kando, and Teal are sent to excavate the central bore sent to excavate to the central bore site. Jamie and Kali survive the explosion in a nuclear bunker below the main building. After a struggle, they open a hatch above them and succeed in crushing a quark with a boulder. This serves Toba, who has helped to investigate how another quark has been destroyed, leaving the Doctor and Zoe freed to roam the Dominator ship. Jamie and Kali continue to attack other quarks in a series of guerrilla raids. The Dulcian Council debates the situation, and not even Tensa, chairman of the, of the Emergencies Committee, can spur them into decisive action. The key moment comes when Rago himself uses the travel pod taken by the Doctor to travel to the capital with a quark. The robot kills Tensa on command. Rago says that the physical Dulcians will be enslaved to use on the Dominator homeworld. Those not selected will be left on Dolkis to die, as the planet is doomed. Toba returns to the ship and demands to know who destroyed the quark. Balin is killed for refusing to answer, and the Doctor is selected to die next. Rago returns and sends Toba to complete the drilling and prepare the bore rockets, using the quarks and, doc and the Doctor, Zoe, Teal, and Kendo as slaves. 
Rego focuses on a precious seed device to be dropped down the central borehole. He also hears the flea land. He also hears from the fleet lander that no Dulcian slave is to be some slave forces to be assembled. All the Dulcians are now to stay on the planet to die when it is destroyed. Dun dun dun. The dick proceeds with the doctor, the other slaves make the progress. But when Toba abandons his watch post, Jamie and Cully seize their opportunity to disable another cork and free their friends. The doctors worked out the dumbass scheme. A nuclear efficiency will be dropped down the borehole, converting the entire planet into a radioactive mass to power the Dominator fleet. They begin digging a tunnel to the central borehole to steal the deadly device before it can detonate. Jamie and Cully support this effort by destroying quarks and homemade bombs. The doctor accepts the sea during its ascent, but tells his friends it cannot be defused. Cully, Teal, and Kando are told to flee in the remaining travel pod, while, while Jamie and Zoe are sent to the TARDIS to wait. The Doctor runs to the Dumbwaiter ship and manages to smuggle the seed on board before the craft lifts off. It soon departs, and the Dumbwaiter's last vision of, is of the seed device rolling on the floor toward them. The Doctor watches Dumbwaiter's ship being destroyed and then heads back to the TARDIS, where he and his two companions must hurry, must depart in a hurry to avoid the advancing lava flows from the new volcanoes. Ooh, so yeah, that was a lot of heavy stuff in there, huh? Anyway, let's look at some continuity and production elements of the story. In episode 4, Jamie references his debut story, The Highlanders, saying he fought the Redcoats in the Battle of Culloden. In episode 1, when the TARDIS first arrives, Jamie asks the Doctor if he's still feeling tired, and Doctor plays that it's a very exhausting business projecting all those mental images, you know. This is a reference to the ending of the previous new serial, The Wheel in Space. In the last episode of that serial, Zoe had stowed away aboard the TARDIS, and the Doctor had decided to give her an idea of what traveling with him was like by using a machine to project his thought patterns into a story of one of his previous adventures, The Above the Daleks, which was then broadcast as a repeat between the, the Wheel in Space and the Domineers. Episode 5 marks the second appearance of the Doctor Sonic screwdriver, and, this is the first, and the first time it is revealed to have multiple functions, when the Doctor uses it to tunnel through the wall of a bomb shelter. Episode 3 had no on-screen episode number caption. The quirks were created as an attempt to create a monster with the same merchandising potential as the popular Daleks. The passive Dulcians were originally conceived as a satire on the 1960s hippie subculture. This serial was originally composed of six episodes, but it was deemed too short of content and reduced to five at the last minute. Producer Peter, Peter Bryant ordered Haysman and Lincoln to abandon writing the sixth episode, and script editor Derek Sherwin rewrote the fifth episode to provide a conclusion. Haysman and Lincoln were not informed of this, or of the BBC's merchandising of the Quarks, which led to their refusal to write for the series again. Subsequently, an additional episode had to be penned for the following The Mind Robber, also making that story five parts. Rather than Corey and Addington Ken doubles as the surface as the planet's surface of Dolkins. Patrick Shannon was absent from all the location filming sessions. A double plays the role of the doctor in the location footage, his face being clearly visible in some shots. Ronald Allen later played Ralph Cornish in The Ambassadors of Death. Arthur Cox later went on to play Mr. Henderson in the 2010 episode of The Eleventh Hour. Brian Kent had previously played Kurt Gantry in the story of the Dog's Master Plan. Malcolm Terrace later appeared in Horns of Neiman. Felt Boss had previously played Akamut in Marco Polo. So yeah, some pretty interesting stuff and yeah, it's just all around interesting. So, overall, I give the Dominators two sonic screwdrivers out of five. Well, join me next week as we meet the Mind Robber. So, until then, this is Hoobie and Queen saying, Oh my giddy aunt! When I say run, run! I have a very polarity of the neutron flow. Would you like a jelly, baby? Fantastic! Allons-y! Geronimo! Bow ties are cool, fezzes are cool, and Stetsons are cool.